In today's episode, our adventure in building the most robust retaining wall and drainage system around our future home continues. And things get wild, as even I get involved in all the fun. It's like you're playing ice hockey, it's a backhander. All right, yeah. Welcome back to our channel. If you're new around here, we're Brittany and Drew, two hopeful adventurers who got married and after eight years of van life, found our dream property and moved across the globe to Portugal, where we're now documenting the journey of transforming this historic water mill into our very first home, not on wheels. Now, let's take in a deep breath and let it out. Let the adventure begin. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. <laughs> Morning, sir. You're good? Good, man. You look very nice today. You look <laughs> lovely. <laughs> Tito. Where do we begin? So Andy's been working really hard to cut a bunch of wood for the forms for the next part of this project. Kind of looks like we're making a skate ramp or something back here. We're going to fill all of this area in. It's a lot of space under these boards. And then we're going to build a lentil after this component dries. But the first step was getting the forms molded. That way we can get all the cement in this place and let it sit for a couple days and dry properly. So five, ten, ten and maybe two. Nice and sloppy, just like we like it. I win. Oh. Ah, you lost. oh, I did lose. Shoot. Ugh. Not so bad. There you go. Yeah, it's going to be a few buckets. Can anybody guess how many buckets it's going to take to fill up this whole thing? It's probably about a third of a cubic meter. 36 buckets? One bucket is eight liters, is a little hint. Oh, I'm not going to do that math right now. Hey, any ladies out there get the math problem right? Andy will send you a handwritten note. <laughs> <laughs> Andy had the brilliant idea. Why don't we just fill up the space with some of these rocks and then just pack the buckets in around those. Chuck them in there. Yeah. See this? Every bit we fill up with rocks is one less bucket of concrete. So just doing this is going to save a lot of work. And back here, we've got the bottom base part filled. And this is the top lintel area that we have the cage in place.
All right, our form's looking great down here. Yeah. And the nice thing about uh, taking a foam work off uh, earlier is that you can still shape the concrete a bit. Yeah, snap it off a little bit. Sweet. While the guys have been working hard playing with concrete, I have had the luxury of staying a little bit cleaner than them these days. And thanks to the sponsor of today's episode, Kitsch, I have also discovered rice water protein shampoo and conditioner bars, which are not only better for the environment because they come in a bar form instead of in a single use plastic bottle. These bars lather up beautifully in water and I use them in their little beauty bar bags, which help them drip dry and last longer. But the hydrating rice water protein has seriously helped to rebalance my scalp, improve the texture of my hair, and even prevent split ends. This is what my hair looked like before using the bars. It was like a little bit limp, a little bit greasy at the roots, and now it's like flowy and not frizzy, but they're made with earth-friendly, vegan, cruelty-free ingredients. And Kitsch has an incredible variety of other beauty products. And right now, using our code Mr. and Mrs. Adventure, you will get 25% off site-wide. And Kitsch ships to the US and internationally to over 27 countries. And they even have a subscription option for an even better discount. Let's go see what kind of dirty work those guys are getting into right now. All right, big moment here. We just picked one of our melons that was over there in the brush. Andy argues that it's watermelon. I say it's Gila. And what do we got? It's, don't know. <laughs> it's like a really hard melon. For you. <laughs> Tastes like watermelon. Watermelon? Really? Yeah. There's a slight taste of watermelon. You're right. But there aren't seeds all over. Like, it almost looks like the polyps of a jackfruit. Still unsure of what kind of melon that actually was, the guys refueled and continued on to the next step for the day. All right, time for the next form. Instead of measuring everything and um, wasting wood, I'm just taking what we have already and see what fits and fill the gaps Portuguese style or something. Because this will ever be, everything uh, will be underground, so we don't uh, need to be so exact. Any gaps you got, you fill it with spray foam around the wooden forms. That way the oozing of the cement doesn't push itself out and we lose all the buckets we've worked hard to create and pour down into these areas. This is how we want it. So right now I actually need to clean out this entire area of rocks. The French drain is buried underneath this area and I'm gonna be taking all the terrain, moving it away from the drain so that we can put the rock, the gravel right on top of it. So anytime there's water and moisture, it can go right to the drain and zip its way out of this spot. So just like those first days when we started on this project, I'm hauling more rock out of this area. Time to open up the trench and find our tube that's underneath there. This is the MVP tool around here. This is a Portuguese enchada, and Andy is demonstrating it for us. So this is the tool for everything. Construction with it, they do farming with it. It slices the roots. They use them in the gardens a lot. Can peel trees even. MVP tool around here. Ours in the US are always flat. It's the same like in Germany, but we yeah. didn't come up with um, all those usages. We yeah, just yeah. use it to like take the weed out. Just for it to make that's like, it. yeah. Gross. I mean, every guy needs a good hoe. <laughs> hoe. Hoe. We gotta fill up these wheelbarrows, push them down there, and then throw the scoops over the wall. I guess I deserve that for overfilling it. Just throw it there and then push it later. Okay, we'll throw it in the middle spot, push to the right, fill it to the left. that you call those short pants? How do you call it? Shorts. Shorts. But I love that you call it short pants. It's so much better. <laughs> well, it's maybe because of German. We say Hose, Hose, Hose. Hose. Pants, short pants. Short pants. <laughs> it's also funny because in English you say, I take a shower. Yeah. 
In Germany you say, I shower. When I came back from like yeah. three years only talking in English, in German it's like, ich, ich dusche, yeah, I shower. Yeah. Ich nehme eine dusche, I take a shower. And why, what are you taking? Why? Like you shower. Like, yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> Time to get this bad boy filled. That's what I came for. It's so nice in here with all the windows open. It's such a beautiful day, so I figured I'd let a lot of fresh air get into the mill. Just let it dry out a little bit. I haven't had all the windows open in quite some time, so. Today is a day that that needed to happen. I especially love when the turret windows are open. Hey buddy, you napping? You're supervising. Good boy, Flashy. Good boy. There you go. Yep. Wait, let me put my cigarette away for once. <laughs> <laughs> Two or three. Cool. It's starting to look like a patio back here. We put that covering on while I was gone for all the rain that was happening. It's a good thing because it just drained it this way and we got to see that our French drain was working properly. Well engineered. This will be finished concrete height plus tiles, whatever paving. Yep. And we're continuing a little bit of a slope. So I'm actually gonna lay one more post. Concrete is gonna come onto here. Because the thing is like, this wall here is also the retaining for this. A little drainage system in the back of here. Gives us not the possibility to, to retain that, so that's impossible. So the only thing we can do is go through here now, underneath. Our next row of blocks are going in. We got a nice little base layer going here. Built the trough out of mud. And it's gonna suck these blocks down. I like the puzzle piece. It's the master cut. So this will be the level of the area in which I'm at, and then these, these will be the steps down to that area. Andy and I just realized we should take a break. We need some energy. It's lunchtime. What's happening? The timing. Hi, Minoosh. Minoosh. Hi, such a sweet girl. Hi, buddy. <laughs> she so just happy. has a smile ear to ear. We love you. Drew wants me to go down and mix some cement. Time to change and I have just the thing. When Drew went back to Florida, I ordered this on eBay. It's actually <laughs> like little boys size 10. I'm pretty sure this brand was popular back in the 80s, but look at that. Look at this. It fits me literally like a glove. Let's go make some cement. I've never done this. And there they are. Look, our reinforcements here. Time for ah. me to learn. Nice uh, working <laughs> jumper. Uh, jumper. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> it's like a boy's size 10. <laughs> perfect. All right, you ready? I think so. Andy, we're going to have her put the next bit of sand in. All right. So the mix is five shovels of sand, okay. one seven shovels of wheat dust, okay. full shovels. Okay. <laughs> that might mean you take like a half a shovel to every shovel. So that okay, means so 15 14. shovels yeah. of sand on okay. the <laughs> 10 shovels of Brita. It's gonna take me a while. And so you always put a bucket of water in first. Okay. Then you always put the sand in first. Then you always put almost all the Brita in first. And then you put the cement in because we don't want it to stick to the sides. And if you would put the cement in first and then then you render the inside of the concrete mixer. And always try to never look at it. You need 
throw it over your shoulder. I can do this. Just getting the shovel's a little difficult. You'll do great. And swing it into the mixer. Watch out. It's like you're playing ice hockey. It's a backhander. All right, yeah. <laughs> You know what's really nice is to have Brittany out from behind the editing studio working with us out here. Female energy. Yeah. <laughs> we can do things too. <laughs> In position. Yeah. No. <laughs> nice. Off to the races. Way they go. Amazing. And it's okay if we spill a little bit because we'll shovel it up and toss it in the mix later. Oh, oh. Everything was fine. <laughs> we were going for speed there. It has to be raised up so it can pour into the yeah. 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 Oh, I stepped in it too. Oh no. <laughs> I just did it like two seconds ago. That's like a cow patty if I've ever seen one. No, real smushy. At least it doesn't stink. <laughs> Working? Yeah. Looks around again. I don't know why they call construction workers rough people. <laughs> Beautiful. Look at that. I like it much better. <laughs> How many wheelbarrows will it take to fill? Uh, we think this will be maybe eight or ten. Okay. So Andy's packing it in so there's no air bubbles. Yeah, we don't want pockets to form and we want to make sure we can get it as solid as possible just like how that one turned out. Am I doing this right? <laughs> You're doing it right. I feel like it really actually moves a lot when you do that. You mm -hmm. want to pack down in there nicely. Yeah. Wow. And you can, um, you can like wiggle. Wiggle? As hard as you want because it's, it will always run down. So then oh, we're just okay. gonna pull it back up. There's still the air in it. That's why we try to like. And then on this side you have a little gap. Oh, I see. And uh, you go with this one like really down. Okay. Until it starts squeezing out on the bottom. Oh wow. Mr. and Mrs. A. Also A for Andy. A for Andy. And A plus. Great work team. Teamwork. Hey, that wheelbarrow's waiting for you. Oh, right. I'm on it. Push. That a girl. You say stop how much you want to bring up. I say stop. Okay. <laughs> oh, that was a good call. <laughs> All right, hold on to that wheelbarrow. Feel it pulling? I've never done this before, let alone downhill. Almost. Nice. 
back for my next load. All right. What do you think of that experience? I think it gives me a lot more respect for you guys because <laughs> I know how hard it was to move a small load. So. You know what though? Kudos to you for getting out here. You know, you gotta try new things. You learn a lot about yourself and you have greater respect for others. Get it where, it's, where it counts. <laughs> We're almost done on this arm. And I have been sent to do a little bit of detail work here. As you can see here, some of our exposed rocks have been splattered with uh, the cement. So I'm gonna do a little bit of scraping here, here, just to get some of the splatter off. So basically from here, it will all be filled with gravel to the top of that little thing over there. And this will be exposed and we'll refinish it and make it look more natural so that it matches the wall. But again, we wanna get those splatters off. We're getting there. Oh. Having the right tools definitely makes a difference. This wire brush, getting the job done. So like that. Ah. But, but no pressure. Ah, no pressure. Yeah, and not so steep, go a bit flatter. With the ah, like more like that, okay. And then you just go several times. Okay. And at some point it's gonna get Learning how to make it beautiful like Andy does. The twist of the wrist. <laughs> beautiful. Nice. Now what's this section? <laughs> we had a little extra cement that we made, so we're just gonna pack in a little gap down here that we had. Can't let any cement go to waste. What is the technology behind these antennas? So those are the connections for the next step. Because we're gonna pour a lintel here, so the same style than this. Yes. And uh, we wanna connect to the existing steel cage to gain the flexibility and the hold. You could drill after, but it's not the correct way to do it. Because now if I just wiggle it in, it's already part of this one. Yeah. And then after when it's dry, I can bend them wherever I want. I only do this um, because you filled up all the way, which is fine. But here, for example, we just spared it out so we didn't have to put anything. Question, somebody suggested that, and you would know from your knowledge, but when you <laughs> stick that down, it's like a straight end down. Why not put like another bend or hook on it so that it holds? Is it just that the possibility of it coming out is never a thing? Profile the on texture. There, the yeah. texture. And I mean, this one was sticking in there two days ago. Yeah, yeah. Try to put it out. In no way. So <laughs> really, it's just, it's again overdoing it for yeah. no reason to bend no. a hook. Okay. Here we don't have a pulling force, we only have a pressure force. So it won't go anywhere. Mm. So interesting. Yeah. No. Mm. In the first year of my apprentice, the only thing we did was like studying forces, basically. Like, where's the force coming from? But then if it's pressures here and you got a pillar there, like, where's it going? So where's the st where does the steel have to um, have to be and why? What uh, function does it take and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so the first year is only engineering, basically. I think you're an apprentice now, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> I'm in so class much. Andy. Yeah. <laughs> Favorite teacher. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hey there. One thing we have to do after every time that we do these cement project is clean our tools effectively and efficiently. That way they're not just like caked with a whole layer of cement next time or concrete. So it just takes a few minutes. You gotta clean the whole mixer over here, clean the wheelbarrows. Remember, we're off grid out here, so we just have water in this big tank here. It's 250 gallons or a thousand liters. We've been using it for probably two weeks now and we still got water in there but there's actually no water like a hose that we can use for this. So it's just buckets and some good old elbow grease. Time for a post-work treat. Did I see how big this grapefruit is? Our friends Paul and Kate grew this on their very own land, not too far from here. So we're gonna get to taste the fruits of their land. Can you believe this? Let me show you what a normal size grapefruit is like. Hold on. That thing's massive. <laughs> Normal grapefruit. Let's cut this baby up. Thanks, friends. Ta da! Mm. Mm. We love you guys. We'll catch you in the next episode.